Thank you, Mr. Wen Lu. Uh, do the judges of the Green Chamber want to put questions to the parties? Uh, I see no hand, no arm, uh, with my eyes. Uh, so I, I suggest, if you don't mind, that we immediately, without having a break, uh, continue with uh, a short uh, second round of uh, presentations. I will ask uh, uh, the Turkish government first and the applicants uh, secondly to if they wish so, briefly reply to the arguments of uh, the other party. I call again Sir Michael Wood. Mr. President, um, if the court would allow, we would, I think, prefer a very short break if we could have 10 or 15 minutes. Thank you. 10 minutes would be fine. The hearing is resumed, and as I said, I will uh, ask for short replies as Turkey and the applicants. So, uh, Sir Michael, please. Thank you, Mr. President, members of the court. It's clear that today the applicants have once again come before you to present a root and branch attack against the law of 2005 against a remedy which this court has already found to be in principle in compliance with convention rights. This is not the action of persons seeking to have recourse in good faith to the convention system. We believe it is a political move as is apparent from the intervener's pleadings and we would urge you to reject this approach. The intervener indeed um, suggested that this was, as they called it, a new pilot judgment case. But that's not the position. The pilot judgment case was Zanidis Arrestis, and as I think Mr. Um, Anderson rightly said, this is a continuation of that. This is not a new pilot uh, judgment case, as suggested by uh, Mr. Sine. A second point is that we once again heard, heard um, that restitution should be the only or principled redress. And reference was made, among other things, to the draft articles on state responsibility. We would say these are irrelevant. Uh, this is a special system. Uh, in any event, they do not exclusively refer to material impossibility. What we did, in fact, in enacting the law was precisely what the court had asked for on this point, to provide for the possibility of restitution as well as other procedures. We heard a number of examples of individual cases uh, this morning, and I won't uh, address them, but I will make clear that we simply do not accept uh, the accuracy of what was put to you this morning by our opponents. Uh, for example, the description of Mr. Fouad's case bears little relationship to reality. Uh, we understand that he, his case was misrepresented. He is not pursuing his application. Um, I want especially to reject in the firmest possible terms the allegation of bribery. Uh, that, I think, is totally out of order. Um, if there were any evidence of any such thing, it would, of course, be looked into. But to make allegations like that in this court is, is not acceptable. We heard a lot again about Article 159 of the TRNC Constitution. We say that the Constitutional Court, in its decision, of 2006 has resolved that issue once and for all. It made it clear that the European Convention on Human Rights is directly applicable in the north of Cyprus and that 
uh, the Constitution and that provision in particular have to be interpreted in conformity with the Convention. Next, it was said that the awards of compensation were too low. I answered that this morning, but I would emphasize that all the friendly settlements that have been agreed are voluntary. No one is required to agree to a friendly settlement. Indeed, even after a friendly settlement has been agreed, uh, the party concerned uh, can withdraw from it before it is signed, so there's time for reflection. It was suggested that these are uh, poor people under great pressure to agree to anything. I would just recall the two recent cases, which were certainly not poor people. They were wealthy people. The case of Mr. Severis, who received something like £12 million pounds sterling, and the case I referred to this morning that received uh, £9.3 million. I'll say a word about bizonality. Bizonality is the established UN parameter for a solution to the Cyprus problem. It's been endorsed by the Security Council. It's been accepted by the Greek leadership. In his report, the Secretary General stated, and I quote, the bizonality of the Federation should be clearly brought out by the fact that each federated state will be administered by one community which will be firmly guaranteed a clear majority of the population and of the land ownership in its area. Of course, one can interpret bizonality in different ways, but that's really not a matter uh, for this court uh, in this case. It's a matter which is under negotiation in the delicate, uh, friend, the delicate uh, negotiations being led by the UN. And finally, uh, Mr. Chairman, I would just come back to our basic point. Uh, on numerous grounds, the other side, our opponents, have challenged the law of 2005. We say that those challenges should be tested by applicants, the applicants who have not uh, even made any effort to test that remedy. We say, above all, that this court, in the Zanides Arrestes pilot judgment, decided that in principle that law was uh, satisfactory, was in conformity with the Convention, and it really is not uh, for our opponents at this stage to come up with, as I put it, a root and branch attack on the law. Unless I can be of any further assistance, that concludes my remarks. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Mr. Anderson, please.